Today, we're going to be talking about the thrilling life of what it means to be an accountant. With Peter Morton, will be our guest. He's also a member of Knights on Bikes. He's a certified motorcycle safety expert. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I once did a whole series with EWTN on, on caves. All the different caves of the Bible and caves around the world. Um, if you've ever been to uh, Israel, you just see lots of caves. In fact, the Annunciation where Mary lived, um, she lived in a home that was carved out of a cave. You know, it was carved out and then there were stones from that cave then were carved and made to extend the cave into a into a bigger house. There's a, a, Jesus was a technon in the Greek. He was a builder. He probably worked mostly with stone. If you've been to Israel, you know there's only one wood building in the whole place, and that is uh, the prime minister's house. But I want to talk to you about the cave today of Adullam. This is the cave where uh, King David fled to when Saul was trying to hunt him down. Uh, David was a very loyal servant to him, but he was a better fighter, or he, his, his battles received more glory. Saul, it says, killed his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. And so Saul became jealous, and David had to hang out. He ended up in the cave of Adullam, and, uh, but men gradually started to gather to him. And it said people that were uh, kind of misfits or owed money or, you know, just people who weren't fitting in joined him at the cave. In time, though, that cave of Adullam uh, those men became mighty warriors. Uh, not a big army, but a powerful army. And I'm thinking about also the 300 men of Thermopylae. I've been to that, right to that place where the 300 Spartans uh, battled in that, nor in that narrow, narrow gorge. And of course, the 300 men of Gideon who, uh, who, who rose up in, in, in battle and, and uh, won great victories for the Lord. It doesn't take a lot of men. It just takes actually two or three to start and then God blesses those two or three, and uh, we become uh, we become like the men in the cave of Adullam, M uh, misfit knuckle, knuckle draggers. Um, maybe we're not great theologians, but we sure do love our families. We sure do love Jesus, and uh, by that by that devotion to our families and to the Lord to live a life of virtue, God infuses us with His power. I love the scripture verse. I used it for my first uh, black belt motto. He trains my hands for war so that my so that my arms can bend a bow of br bronze. By thee I can leap a troop. By thee I can leap a wall. By thee I can crush a troop. By thee I can leap a wall. By thee I can bend a bow of bronze. It's by the power of the Lord, but it takes one or two or three men to begin to gather. And that's why I have Peter Morton with me today. Peter Morton, um, he's a member of Knights on Bikes. Uh, he and I did uh, five... Uh, a set of five motorcycle safety briefings that's available on our Bear Wozniak YouTube channel and we're making it available through Nights on Bikes too. But whenever I'm with Peter, I just sense a very solid, safe place, like a walled city. Like Peter, uh, his life of virtue and his love for the Lord, you just know that when you're with, your, with Peter, everything is the way it's supposed to be. Everything is right. So I think that's a pretty powerful introduction uh, now he's probably all prideful about it. But, Peter, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Well, thank you, Baron. Thanks for that introduction. That was, uh, wow, thank you. It's how I always, t when I mention your name, that's what I always say because there's just something about that. Uh, so, Peter, do you want to tell us all about the beautiful life of being a, a, an accountant? No, I want to ask you this question instead. <laughs> I want you to tell me briefly, your, I would like for you to name off each motorcycle, not all of them, but the motorcycles uh, that you have had and what, what what was happening in your life, how the Lord is working in your life uh, with the, at, at, during that season with that motorcycle. Can you, can you pull that oh, off? That's a, How's your memory? That's a, good, that's a good way of doing that. Well, it starts back in 1984, and uh, that was, I, I lovingly call that my first midlife crisis. I was coming out of a, um, not a very successful marriage at the time. And I bought a 1984 uh, CM400A automatic, 
uh, rode it home, didn't have a clue what I was doing, rode it home, uh, and I, I survived that, and that's when I fell in love with uh, riding motorcycles. So I there was something up to. There was something about that, though, that moment of crisis in your life, uh, that that you wanted to be back in touch kind of with your wild side. And there's something about the freedom of the oxygen pouring right into your skin when you ride a motorcycle, that you needed a an exterior feeling for what was happening inside your heart. At that time, were you... Uh, were you, were you walking with the Lord, or had you had you felt like He had rejected you because things had failed, or or where where were you in your walk at that time? Uh, no, not at all. I, I was. Uh, what had happened? Let's backtrack just a little bit. I was uh, grew up in in just outside of New York City on Long Island, and then moved to Western New York after uh, completing my first degree there, and. Uh, that's when things were not so good in, at the time. This is the late 70s. Things were not so good economically in the oh, yeah. Buffalo area where I right. lived. Uh, everything was closing down. So a friend of mine called me and said, I've got an opportunity for you. And uh, I moved. that's when I moved to Georgia and uh, been here ever since. And thank the Lord that, that he called me and did that. Uh, mm. That was just a, uh, just a godsend to to bring me down here moving from an area where on every corner there's a bar to uh, an area on every corner there's a baptist church so it was quite <laughs> <Yeah>. a <laughs> quite well, a culture what, shock what was your walk with the lord at that time um did you have a relationship with the lord would you say or wh where were you at th at that time it was it was on the back seat at that time and i had come down to i uh, come down here and, you know, every time I turn around, somebody at one of the Baptist churches would ask me to join their church. And I said, no, you know, I, 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 uh, you know I'm, I'm Catholic. I'm Catholic. And uh, so I, I, we did join the, the church when I moved down here. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that's when I met a very dear friend of mine, Dick Hinchy. And Dick took me under his wing and uh, made me join the Knights of Columbus. That's my first experience. I hear that so often, that someone grabbed someone and made them join the Knights of Columbus, and uh, that was kind of the slippery slope into a deeper walk with the Lord. Uh, yep, absolutely it was. And it, it, he saw something in me, I believe, that I didn't see in myself at the time, and slowly started giving me responsibilities and, and broadening my horizons and uh, getting me involved in different ministries within the church. And that's when I started to begin to see some of the picture that, um, that I needed to see. At that that's time. so interesting that he gave you responsibilities. You know, it's, it's the nature of, me, of men to want to work, men, men Absolutely. In, in particular. And by carrying the burden of the Lord like that, it began to establish you and settle you into your faith. Absolutely. And if you think about it, what the way I look at it is, you know, Jesus gave us two commandments. Uh, the first one is real simple. Uh, love God with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind. But the second one is what Dick was working within me to do. And that is love your neighbor as yourself and to be a servant. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what that's what he instilled in me or well, not instilled in me, but that's what he brought back into my life to actually be a servant. Uh, to other human beings, and that's really what the Knights of Columbus really does. You know, when you lose, well. Jesus said, "If you lose, if, if you lose yourself, you'll basically find yourself." In losing yourself in service and giving yourself away, is when you find out you really get to know yourself as you give you as you give yourself away in, in service and in love. I mean, the word, the Catholic word for love is is uh, caritas, charity. Caritas. It's yeah. not a warm, fuzzy feeling that we feel. Uh, the word for ch charity means that it's self-donation, willing the true good for the other and doing that through an act of self-donation. So it's not like God so loved the world that he felt all warm and fuzzy and gushy. He actually did something about it, right? And so it's very interesting that this man, his way of drawing you to a deeper walk with the Lord is to put you in place of service and put you in a place of responsibility. We're talking with Peter Morton. He's a member of Knights on Bikes, and he and I have done a, a series of safety vid videos. He's a certified uh, safety instructor with both Harley-Davidson and the Motorcycle Safety 
Foundation, so he's a pretty cool guy, and he's a member of Knights on Bikes. We've gotten to ride together quite a bit. Um, and and Peter, uh, when you when you uh, began to move in that area, what what happened uh, internally in your walk with the Lord? Did you begin to serve more? That, yeah, that's when when I started looking into um, different things, more about our faith. I started reading the Bible. I started. Um, just to, to have a different perspective on, on life in general and figuring out, you know, why are we here? It's a great why question. are we on this planet? And, uh, and just beginning to see some of that, answering some of those questions. And well, doing that within the framework of the church and within the framework of the Knights of Columbus. At the, the, the church has such a great answer to those questions, you know, both from a metaphysical, philosophical view and also a re- revelationary uh, scriptural point of view, and then the tradition of the church. It's so cool how deep you can go. We're talking with Peter Morton. Uh, he's probably uh, the first accountant that's been on my show other than myself, <laughs> and he's a biker. And he and I have done a series of five motorcycle safety videos. I ask him questions, and I learned so much uh, during doing that during that recording, and you can find those at the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with Peter Morton. He's a biker. Uh, just that's what he is. You know, he, he breathes that. He loves that fresh Fresh feeling of, I always say when I go out for a ride, I'm going to go get some oxygen. What, don't you say something like that too? I've heard you say, when you're going to go for a ride, what are you doing? What, what do you say? I'm going for some wind therapy. Wind therapy, you call it. Yeah. It's like wind skydiving therapy. too. You just free fall and the oxygen just comes right into you. There's something about the exhilaration of that of that motorcycle. It harkens back to the cowboy days, I think. You know, that, that ride, riding that motorcycle does just does something. Can you, can, for the people who are watching on YouTube and those listening, can you describe the different elements of what you have on your biker vest? I know that's a Knights on Bikes vest, but you have other pins and patches uh, on there. Maybe what oh. do you have? What do you have in your vest pockets? <laughs> yeah, but in I my was vest curious. pocket uh, yeah. on this side. <laughs> uh, let me pull it out here. On this side, I've got the uh, rosary. It's a what, single and decade I've, rosary. Yeah. Single decade rosary, yeah. And I've been known to uh, on longer rides, especially if it uh, doesn't require um, 100 percent, 100 percent of my attention. I'll be saying a, a decade of the rosary. Going and it's down. and it's uh, uh, and it's it's pinned to your vest. It's attached to your vest. And what else? Yeah, what else pin, do you have? Pinned to my vest on the on the left side, so my right side on the throttle. We call um, we call yeah exactly, and we call we call our. When we ride, Cindy and I will usually pray a rosary, or at least a decade of the rosary. We call it the Renegade Rosary Run. Yeah, there you go. What else do you have well, in your actually, vest pockets? I want to know what you got in there. Well, I have a, <laughs> uh, for those that <laughs> for those that uh, may need one, I've got a rosary to give away. Oh wow, that's so cool! That is so cool. 
Yeah, and that that's about it. No for, earplugs. Uh, no. Well, I carry those in the in the bags on the bike. Okay, so we've already uh, covered your first motorcycle. Uh, yep. Were you still riding that when you joined Knights of Columbus? And that you're saying that was when you really began to go through a deeper walk with the Lord. Well, that, that actually came later. Uh, the the motorcycle came later. Um, okay. And that, and then the uh, that one I found out was uh, was too small. Uh, so I I did the same thing. I bought natural <laughs> natural progression. Uh, bought a uh, 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 Suzuki 650L. And that is um, that is the motorcycle that I courted my wife of 31 years on. Yeah, That's you that. had some. You're some kind of romantic guy. Maybe all of the knuckle draggers out there should listen. What What did you do when you asked her out on your first date? I forget. We you mentioned it to me a while ago. First date, uh, I convinced Kathy to actually go on a motorcycle day trip uh, up into the mountains uh, where where I live in the North Georgia mountains. And did you I pick found, her up? Was I, she was she was she living at home at the time? She was living. Yes. So home. you pick her up at her dad's house. Oh no no on no, a no, motorcycle. No. She was at she was at her own house. <laughs> okay okay I get it all right. Yeah, now her, okay. she did she had some kids at the time. She had some little kids at the time, so they yeah. kind of big guys. But yeah. uh, um, we I I taken her found I researched a spot to go off into the lakes where the. Uh, the 19, actually, the 1996 Olympics was there at, uh, later on, where they did the um, whitewater rafting. And I took her up there. I uh, found a, a great spot that was recommended to me. And I had a, a catered lunch that I took out of the saddlebag. That was very smart. And Man, listen to this. He he didn't try to make the lunch himself. That's that's correct. That's very wise. Lunch. See, there's the wise, the wisdom <laughs> there, right there. <laughs> there's a lot of wisdom there, yeah. Uh, at a catered lunch, uh, had a uh, bottle of wine for her because I I didn't. Because you're riding. Riding motorcycle. Yeah. And uh, we had a dessert, of course, and also uh, they were I uh, brought a crystal wine glass for her to drink the wine, in, and also a vase with a uh, rose in it to set in between the. Uh, Man, you are romantic for, for an accountant. Uh, yeah, well, it worked. I mean, we've <laughs> been married for 31 years, so it worked. And that was on the Suzuki. So everyone's got to go out. Suzuki, everyone yeah. needs to go get a Suzuki, I guess. <laughs> then we went to, we, we both like motor, traveling on a motorcycle, but the Suzuki was not conducive to two up riding. So that's when I bought my first Goldwing, which was a 1981 GL 1100. And we, uh, after we got married, we toured all over the country. On that so you're, so that was your <clears throat> that was the bike you had in your early part of your marriage. How did your your faith unfold uh, during that time of your life as you're approaching marriage and in, in your early marriage? In the early marriage, actually, I, I'll tell you what um, what really helped me uh, going back before that, uh, be, uh, just just before Kathy and I got involved, I went through the annulment process. And mm. if you've ever gone through an annulment process, it is such a um, the Catholic Church in, in its wisdom really knows what they're doing with the annulment process, because it made me look inside myself to figure out why I did the things that I did when I did them. Uh, and it was such a, a um, therapeutic cleansing process to go through that. And uh, I wound up forgiving myself for making some poor choices and uh, that that whole process uh if you're if anybody is thinking about going through that process i would highly recommend they they do that you know people i i, I had to i went through that process um right. and it was so healing and it really helped it me it healing. took away the confusion that was there yep. and why things fell apart the way they did and 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 i i know i know i felt so unworthy you know when i when it all started to fall apart for me i went to the priest and i said well I guess I shouldn't be a reader anymore and I shouldn't be leading confirmation classes. And he said, what did you do? What did you do wrong? And that was the beginning of, of first, but he continued to allow me to continue to serve. I was just really surprised. And I went through that process and it was just so healing, so healing. I wish that the annulment process had something for, in my case, I had uh, four children at that time. I wish there was something there that would have helped explain things to them too. But but it, re it really, uh, and it also lets you know what the church 
uh, affirms uh, that um, that wasn't a real marriage and that you can go on and be married again. You know, and I'm just so happily married now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so and so you went through that you went you went through that process when you were on the on the gold wing. Or no, on the that Kawasaki? was before. Okay. That was on the uh, actually that was between the the first Honda and the Suzuki. Okay, 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 and then so you, so as you're getting to know her, uh, you were going through the annulment process at the same time, or, or went through the annulment process most of it before and just, just right just, at no. Yeah, her. yeah. So the annulment process was really um, not a result of me meeting Kathy, but it was uh, um, something that I wanted to but do. But it's just anyway. so good. We need to talk to people out there that are right now. They go, oh, it's such a job. It's such a hassle. Oh, I don't even know where to begin. It's just like uh, starting a car. You go outside, put the key in the ignition, start the car, and let the church shepherd you through that process. Uh, exactly. Don't be stuck. Uh, e even if you're not sure whether you ever want to marry again or anything like that, to go there and have the church help you discern and to bring that healing that needs to be done, it's just so important. I know so many people that are just stuck. They don't. They never take that next step. And uh, and then I see them a lot of times they're out dating or I've seen some Catholics that are living with a, a woman because they don't have they 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 don't have their annulment. I'm like, uh, where does that fit in? How can you even think think to receive the sacraments uh, right. in that situation? So everything needs to be done in order. And uh, also you're doing it as an example to your children if you have children that you're seeking the church's wisdom, you know, and their help. So anyway, you found your well, wife, and go ahead. I'm sorry. You Peter. mentioned you mentioned you know what's the first step I should take, and that is that go apply for the annulment, and the, you'll get guided through the process. And it, it's, it's and you well may worth. not receive an annulment, or you may receive an annulment, but either way, you're going to go through a, a, a process of of examination and understanding and wisdom and healing. It's it's a beautiful process to go through. And it's very, not easy. Very professional. It's not easy. It's, it's, oh no, you know, there's a lot of it's work not involved. Easy, and it, and it's not going to happen quickly either. Yeah, and that's all part of of the of the process. It's all part of the process. Yeah. Right. So okay, so the goal wing. Get back to the goal wing. Um, when Kathy and I were, were very much involved at that point, uh, we had the goal wing, and I, I actually had uh, after was it right at week when we got married, or right or right in, in that time, I was pulling a um, a pop up camper behind the goal wing. So that's when we started traveling around quite a bit. What was the furthest road? What's camping. the furthest road trip you went on? Um, let's see. We were down to the Keys a lot. Um, oh, for for us, that's a about a, a little less than thousand miles. Uh, up all over the the southeast, um, up through just all over. Because that's uh, what that is, that is what marriage is, isn't it? It's, it's a bit of a road trip. It's an adventure. Oh yeah, yeah. And Absolutely. you never know, and you never know what's going to be around the next corner. God does, you know, yeah, but oh, yeah. but we don't, yeah. and we have to learn. We have to remember that God is never surprised by anything that confronts us or anything that happens to us. He's right there with us. We're talking to Peter Morton. He's a member of Knights on Bikes. Uh, he's also a motorcycle safety certified motorcycle cycle safety instructor with Harley Davidson and the Motorcycle Safety Foundation. And he and I put together a series of motorcycle safety videos if you want to go to the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel and subscribe click the little bell and uh, you'll see there's a special playlist just for that we're talking with Peter Morton this is the Bear Wozniak adventure we'll be right back with more Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans mortgages SBA loans and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. 
join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with my friend Peter Morton. He's a member of Bear's Man Cave. We have a, a special, it's a secret Facebook group. You really can't join by trying to find us on Facebook. You go to deepadventure.com and you become a member and then you're invited to join us wherever we challenge you, we challenge each other, we inspire each other too, we encourage each other, we mobilize each other uh, through the things that we share, especially certain times you really need prayer and those brothers uh, pray for each other. And then every two or three weeks randomly we will have a Zoom video chat meetup. We've been doing Zoom before people knew what Zoom was uh, for almost two years now and uh, just gathering together and uh, sharing, talking story as we say in Hawaii and then going through uh, a study on the virtues, my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. So, hey, Peter, before we uh, go back to the story, tell, tell people what, tell, tell the men, uh, you know, what the man cave is, why they might want to consider uh, becoming a part of it. Well, I can tell you what, why I became part of it um, and continue to is because sometimes you just need to talk to other men that know um, maybe what you're going through and maybe can challenge you uh, in, in your faith and in your life choices and lifestyles. And that is, uh, that's one of the things that, that I enjoy the most out of being part of the, the man cave is you're, you know, you're, you're going, huh, they're saying, why aren't we doing this? Or why should we do this or do this? And, uh, you know, the, the challenge is there and, and the accountability is there. Uh, you know, you're, you're accountable to your, your friends uh, from all over the world mm. uh, in the man cave. And, and that's the, uh, the interesting thing. And you're, it, not only can you find some like-minded Catholic men to help you, but you can also help some like-minded Catholic men at times as well. Yeah, you're, you're a participant. You're not just there to receive. So often right. in, in ministries, uh, which we love, you're, 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 uh, it's a one-way communication. You, you become a member and you receive things from them, but you're ne there's not a two-way dialogue. But in the man cave, there's a dialogue uh, not only with me, but with every, all the other members. And it really is am amazing how um, the encouragement, I think especially, the, the, usually when men first join, quite often they're in a real tough place. And uh, the in the rush of encouragement f to them, uh, and because you know, we've all been there, people think one of the big well eyes of the enemy is is you should be ashamed of the situation you found yourself in, um, and and then we tend to isolate. Men are prideful, and we isolate. But when you get in the man cave, you realize we're all bozos on the same bus. We've all been there, and we we kind of we're there to kind of help each other out, you know. And and it's it's been a big it's a big part of my life too. I'm just. Uh, yeah. the, the inspiration for that cave was, was well, really something. And the, the, the Zoom format is great because I was traveling in the, the last meeting. Uh, I was traveling, and then I had some time this morning before this session, and I looked at the recorded uh, version of it and probably got almost as much out of that as if I would have been there. That was really something, time. wasn't it? The Holy Spirit really showed oh, that up. Was, that, was, that was something. Yeah. Uh, that was something. And that, I, that's what I needed to, to see this morning. Uh, one of our men. So that, uh, that, that's good, too. One of our men, Peter, um, as you know, uh, is a captain in, in, the, in the police force. And right. he's right now, this is recorded, but we're going through the, the coronavirus. Is, uh, things are start, businesses are opening up again in churches. But now we're going through all the riots. And so he just was, uh, when we saw him, we could just see. The, the buzzing bees all around him, just, just this massive confusion of the attack that was going on. And, and we prayed for him. And then, when, and then when nothing happened, we prayed again. And then you could see, uh, you could see that. that it. Yeah. You could see it, right, on the recording. Yeah. Uh, I love that scripture verse. Though my enemy be around me, buzzing around me like angry bees in the name of the Lord, I will surely cut them off. And, you know, Satan's, one of Satan's name in the Old Testament is Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies. And we just got to cut out all that confusion and listen to truth. And I think that's what you find in the man cave. It's no BS. It's pretty direct sometimes. Uh, and, uh, and we get, we, and, and then you see other men having sit, gone through the same thing, but also affirming the same truth, affirming the actual truth. It's, it's great. We're talking with Peter Morton. 
Uh, Peter, um, so as you, Peter is a is is a member of Knights on Bikes, which I am too. Incredible organization, over four thousand men, and there's a lot of women involved too. Knights on Bikes, actually, it's men and women that are involved, and uh, and we were fortunate to uh, ride with them up in Lansing, Michigan, uh, last summer, and I think this coming a week, a year from now, there everyone's going to be meeting up down in New Orleans. So, if you're a biker. Uh, and, and, and join Knights on Bikes. And if you're not a member of Knights of Columbus, join. I know a lot of people have joined Knights of Columbus just so they can be part of Knights on Bikes. So it's just so cool. But now, so when you were newly married, what, what was your place? What was your walk with, uh, with together in the Lord? What, and what motorcycle was it again you're riding? Uh, 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 Gullwing. Gullwing, okay. Yeah, I had uh, my Gullwing phases where I've had, oh gosh, I lost count of how many I've had, and I still have one. Um, the interesting thing, though, was that we were always active. Uh, Kathy is too. She's she's been. Both of us are cradle Catholics. And as a matter of fact, I've got a patch here. Where is it? Somewhere. He's for those of you who are watching on YouTube, you can see oh, he's wearing his Knights on Bikes vest, motorcycle vest. And what is the patch? The patch says Catholic School Survivor. <laughs> mm-hmm. I loved going so to Catholic a- school. I, I mean, my experience was awesome. Most of my experience was good. Uh, it was it, it, it formed me, uh, and that was part of that uh, being a, a service oriented. Uh, Amen. Person, um, but the the thing was that with Catholic school was all of my neighborhood friends went to the public school. I went to the Catholic school, so there was some you know differences there growing up. But anyway, back to the uh, to the going and our uh, we, we were always active in the church. Uh, Knights of Columbus and, and part of my friend Dick Hinchy got me involved in that. Grew into the ranks. I was a uh, Grand Knight several times. I was District Deputy, which is more and and state program. Champ. So we very. And weren't you also a founder of, of one of the founding members of the chapter for Knights on Bikes too, in your area? Yes, uh, yes. And uh, what what happened there was, <clears throat> my wife Kathy was looking at the Georgia Bulletin, which is the diocesan newspaper. And she said, hey, take a look at this. And uh, it was uh, an ad or a little article about Knights on Bikes, and they were forming a, uh, a formation meeting. And this is in 2013. And we had, you know, we were traveling around on motorcycles all the time. And, uh, of course, I, I was working full time, so it would be on weekends. And the, the different groups that I would travel with was always, um, you know, we'd have to duck out and go to mass, either vigil mass or Sunday morning mass or and, that, and sometimes that's hard to explain to a Southern Baptist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just hard to explain. And we would have to disrupt the whole schedule and to do that. And so now I go to this formation meeting, and there's, uh, I think there was eight of us in the, in the formation meeting. And now we've got a Catholic biker group, and we center all of the activities around, well, when is Mass going to be and what church do we go to? Yeah, and a lot of so times, it's, it's, a lot of times you're church hopping. In other words, you're yeah. you're going meet at this cathedral. We're going to go to this shrine, and then we're going to have some drinks or eat here, and then we're going to end up over there. There's, I, I know when I'm the nights on bikes in, in Florida is the one that I'm active in when I'm in when I'm in Florida, uh, not in Hawaii. Um, there's always that it's some it's always related to what church we're going to start at, what church we're going to end at. You know, right. And so right. you guys, so begin- that was the that was the thing. That was the what what was just, a, a, um, I guess, a, an answer to my prayer that I wasn't praying. Uh, it was a, an answer. It was all through my life, there was all these little things that just kind of thrown in my in my path, and then I was smart enough to actually... Um, yeah, isn't it interesting on. how when you look back, you see... I remember uh, being in Florida with Cindy, you know, living in Hawaii, and now I ended up in Florida, uh, you know, living there part of the time and, my, and meeting Cindy. Like, I re- like, what am I doing in Florida? People to go, why are you here in Florida? I go, I don't know. How long are you going to be here? I'm not really sure. But I just felt compelled to rent a place on the beach in Cocoa Beach because I'd known that area from surfing contest. And, uh, you know, they would ask, well, when are you going to leave? I don't know. I just didn't know. I just felt like I need to be here. And then I meet my wife. And now we live in Hawaii most of the time. But I know one, one morning... We got, got up having my morning liturgy the hour out on the balcony, and uh, Cindy came out and I said, let's pray that we would meet a strong Catholic couple that we can ride with. And that night, we went, to, we went for a motorcycle ride. We stopped off at a, 
at one of the tiki bars there, and there's this couple. We strike up a conversation, and uh, strong. She knew who she knew who I was from EWTN or something, and and uh, next thing you know, they're our bike riding friends. You can ask the Lord for things like that, and God God can put them in your path. Or if or like you said, it's a it's an unasked prayer that God answers. We're talking with Peter Mort. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about what motorcycle safety has to do with uh, with uh, the virtues. Uh, because uh, Peter and I did a series of videos. I was the student, he was the teacher on motorcycle safety uh, for nights on bikes. Uh, and you can find that at the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guide, our my co-adventure guide today is Peter Morton, member of Knights on Bikes, one of the founding members of one of the chapters there in Georgia, and uh, a former Grand Knight uh, with Knights of Columbus and uh, certified motorcycle safety instructor with Harley Davidson and with uh, Motorcycle Safety Foundation. He's a real biker. I mean, I just I, I love riding with him. I just you know he when I took when I uh, interviewed him for this motorcycle safety course, I knew. I had a lot to learn. I and, and every single thing that he said was something that added to my my quiver. And so we encourage you to go to the Bear Wozniak uh, YouTube channel, subscribe, ha ring the bell, and you'll see uh, you'll see there the playlist that includes uh, the motorcycle safety. So tell us, t let's let's fast forward. Running on it, we're all right into our last segment, Peter. Y it was your daughter that inspired you, right, to teach on motorcycle safety. How did that come about? Yes, back in when she was, all my kids ride motorcycles, and when she was uh, ready to, to get her own motorcycle, she wanted to ride, and I insisted that she take the class, the basic riding class, in, um, where I wound up teaching, as a matter of fact. And she came home that, that, after, or that Sunday evening and said, hey, Dad, you know, this is great. I've got my license now, or I got a license waiver, and... Uh, you know, you complain a lot. And I said, uh, okay, what do you mean by that? And she goes, well, you complain that motorcyclists don't interact real well with traffic and uh, car drivers don't interact real well with motorcyclists and you get really aggravated at that. And she goes, I'll tell you what, they're looking for instructors, here's the paperwork, fill it out. There and, you go, that's uh, another one so, of those those things that bumped into you, that was God's <laughs> will. Yeah. 
And so I did, and that was uh, 2000, late 2005, and 2006 is uh, when I became certified. Well, what what the what are the founders. so the thing about motorcycle riding is, um, it's a it's the combination of prudence and and boldness or fortitude. There's a lot of fortitude in riding a motorcycle. Riding 500 miles in a car versus 500 miles on a motorcycle are two different experiences. But you know the virtue of the virtue of prudence or the safety is not necessary. You don't need to know anything about safety if you're sitting on your couch. You only need to understand the virtue of prudence if you're doing something bold. And guess what? If you're a Christian, God wants God has some very bold steps for you to take. So, can you talk a little bit about the how how you? It's not a balance between one or the other, but how the how prudence guides guides the virtue of of uh, fortitude. Or well, prudence, a, a big part of prudence is preparing and preparing for um, a, to be defensive. And that is what motorcycle safety is all about, is to train yourself in to identify those factors and keep you out of trouble. Uh, that's the, the whole concept behind the MSF philosophy, which is, and Harley Davidson subscribes to that. Harley Davidson is, is really part of the MSF family. Um, and if you're prepared, you can handle just about anything. And you can, um, you know, that with uh, 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 being prayerful, you, you've got everything that you really need. Well, let's talk uh, about so that for a minute. Motorcycle. You know, as a, as, but then in spiritual terms, uh, no, I remember training as a black belt. I took Taekwondo and, and, and Tang Soo Do and Kempo and different forms like that. But I always felt I was unprepared for a real fight. I didn't feel like I, w I could grapple properly, you know. And then I went to the, the, the ninja realm, which has a lot of grappling. And then, of course, trained in some Gracie stuff, too. But I trained. I, I felt I would have dreams about being in a fight and then ending up on the ground and not knowing what to do next, you know. And so I prepared. Um, and we need to do that same thing spiritually, like like when Peter talks about uh, getting ready before you go out on a, on a motorcycle. You've trained a lot. You've prepared. You know mentally what you need to do, and you do go through a pre-flight, a pre-ride checklist, things like that. But here, what about if you if your family comes under spiritual attack? Are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, are you ready for that battle? Are you spending an hour every day in prayer? Are you going to to mass? Are you being formed in the catechism? Uh, do you know how to do spiritual warfare? Do you know how to take out your rosary and do spiritual battle when you smell a rat? You know, sometimes there's conflict in your life, and it's just conflict in your life, and you need to pray, and you need to just kind of pray through it and fight through it. But sometimes it's it's a demonic it's demonic resistance and you need to be able to smell the rat and know how to deal with that. If you're not trained, like that scripture verse I quoted earlier, he trains my hands for war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. If you're not fa if you're not if you're not uh, doing spiritual battle every day for your for your family, what's going to happen when there's really when you really face resistance from the enemy, are, are you are you prepared? Are you training for war? So first thing is you're saying motorcycle safety is you're you're when something happens you're ready for it. You guys, if you're not learned, if you're not if you don't know your catechism and you don't know how to wield a rosary properly in battle, then you're probably not ready. And you need to you need to find your way to to be trained in spiritual warfare. And so. First of all, it's it's knowing things in advance, Peter. What else, though, about uh, how to you know? Prudence is called the charioteer of the virtues. It's not like you're either going to be prudent or you're going to be bold. They, you can't be bold unless you're prudent, and you don't need to be prudent unless you're going to be bold. That's true, and and that's the 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 thing with with motorcycles, um, and and I I. Being nights on bikes, we use it as a as a ministry. We do all kinds of uh, things in in the nights on bikes. We'll go to a rosary run. Uh, last weekend, I, I missed it, but uh, there was a they went to the Planned Parenthood instead of rosary. Uh, mm. it, we support on the on the positive side of that. Uh, we support various uh, pregnancy centers that are in line with our Catholic teaching. So no one wants uh, to hear our opinion, right? 
they but what, what we want to do is see men of action you don't just have an opinion about abortion you're doing something about it exactly exactly and the the thing that i like to do and and it's um we there's a, a local um pregnancy center here that will and it, it, my i like to do things that are um for me the the love of riding a motorcycle if i can combine that into doing something that's good uh then th there's a double bonus there and, and that's Go ahead. What we did was what, we, what we've done is we'll have motorcycle rides, uh, create some money or whatever need. The last one we did uh, was they they had a they were short on diapers. Uh, one of the pregnancy centers in in the Atlanta area. Uh, so we had a ride, uh, met at a church, started saying the rosary there, and everybody was required to bring a box of diapers to the pregnancy center, which was the next stop. That's so, so you cool. know, you're, you're, yeah. Uh, so you're, you're. What we're doing is we're combining something that that we love, and the, the interesting thing when we wear this this vest, uh, it's very noticeable. On the back is the Knights of Columbus crest and a cross, and that's it. Um, so that spurs a lot of questions too, and and that's, uh, for me, I'm not, uh, I'm not a, natural born evangelizer. I'm not on a soapbox. Uh, but I wear this vest, and it starts. People start asking questions, and then that's when I can engage them. It's beautiful. And tell them and there's something. About. There's also something else about what you said. There is this element of the freedom, the the, the lone rider, you know. And we love that. I love you know heading out by myself and riding. Or usually my wife is with me. But there's something really powerful about what you said. How you're riding together as a pack to do this. There's what well, talk talk about that brotherhood. The, the biker brotherhood and how that relates to like the man cave or being with a being with a band of brothers that have this same goal which is to spread the gospel and to encourage each other in virtue right and that that's uh um it, it's it's a a biker code that almost comes naturally when you start hanging around other bikers uh we're helping each other out very similar to the man cave we're helping each other out uh no one is ever stranded um call is just a help is just a, a phone call away if needed uh or we will stop uh we'll wave at each other we'll uh just enjoy what we enjoy and we focus that nights on bikes focuses that uh even one step further we're riding motorcycles having that camaraderie that common uh thing when we ride a motorcycle but we're also doing some charitable works under the umbrella of different committees within the Knights of Columbus and Knights on Bikes in specific. And there's something so about, go ahead, I'm sorry, Peter. No, go ahead. Well, there's just, there's just something unique about the power of the, the, the roar of the engines when you're riding uh, together in a pack. Um, and there's something about the unity of that pack, how it flows together, how, how you, this, the, just, just everything about how Everything about riding a pack, there's so many elements to that, so many principles and rules of how you ride like that. And it reminds me of the body of Christ, how we ride together in unity. You know, there's a leader on the front. There may be, there's a tail dragger in the back, tail gunner in the back. Um, but we ride, we ride in unity. And, but the whole time we're riding together, we're watching out for each other. We're being very careful and, and making sure the other person is safe. But that's what the body of Christ is to be like. And, and, and man, if you're a lone ranger out there, um, you know, I, I, I'm a spiritual guy, uh, but I don't like organized religion. That, that's a joke. It's a, it's, a, it's a lie of the enemy. Those are the guys that get picked off, you know, as the stragglers, the ones that are the Lone Rangers. They're the ones that end up losing. Um, you, need, you need to uh, consider maybe going to Knights of Columbus and becoming a member of that and start there, but become part of a band of brothers. Uh, but become part of the body of Christ. Go to church. If you haven't been to church in a while, go to Go, go meet with the priest and say, I'm really, the last thing I want to do is talk to you, but I'm here to talk to you, and I haven't been to confession in a long time. Maybe I should go to confession. And, but just start the process of connecting, and you're going to feel the roar of those motorcycle engines around you, the roar of the, of, the, of, the, of the shout of John the Baptist in the wilderness saying, make straight the path of the Lord. You're going to hear that from your brothers, and, uh, and, you're going to, and it'll revitalize you and it'll strengthen you. Peter Morton, we ran out of time. <laughs> uh, 
Yep. Uh, just one little quick comment. Yeah. All of that that you just mentioned are learned skills. Riding the motorcycle, uh, learning about your faith, and and all of that are learned skills. And there's so much out there within these organizations. Pick one, join one, become active. Uh, you'll be a, a much better person for that. And, and by all means, and cons- learning your faith. By all me- by means, uh, read through the catechism. And by all means, jo- go to deepadventure.com and consider joining Bear's Man Cave. Uh, you'll meet a lot of knuckle draggers, a lot of misfits, uh, but who are being formed to a, into a mighty army. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha! Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.